the New Apostolic Reformation, or we call it NAR or NAR for short, is a fast growing, it's global movement, and it's really causing a lot of division in the church. What is the New Apostolic Reformation? Because I think when we first started talking about this and talking about Bethel or some of those um, like churches in that stream or, you know, thoughts in that stream, I didn't understand at all what it was um, or why it was problematic, what the core tenets were. Can you explain some of that to us? Like, what is the New Apostolic Refor Reformation? Um, yesterday, I called it the revolution. I, <laughs> I really don't know much. Um, but what is the New Apostolic Reformation and what are some of the, the tenets? Like, how will we know if we're encountering it? Right. And so, it, the New Apostolic Reformation, or we call it NAR or NAR for short, is a fast growing, it's global movement, and it's really causing a lot of division in the church. It's redefining key Christian terms like prayer, the gospel, the Great Commission. And the core belief is, so, so it's a movement led by church leaders who claim to be apostles and prophets. And they claim, the core teaching is, they claim that these modern day apostles and prophets must govern the church. And by that, they mean they must hold formal offices, hierarchical offices in church government, and actually the highest offices. So, so uh, like pastors and elders hold offices in church government, except they would say that, that pastors and elders should submit to them, that all other church leaders should submit to them. And the reason is, is because they claim they're bringing critical new revelation that all believers must have uh, for the Great Commission to uh, be fulfilled. And so the Great Commission has been redefined in this movement as the church is supposed to take dominion or, or physical or social, uh, social political control of the earth and bring God's physical kingdom to earth. And, um, and so they would say that, that the way Christians are supposed to bring God's kingdom to earth is through waging spiritual warfare and through working great miracles, even greater miracles than Jesus worked, but that they have the revelations and the strategies that will enable all Christians to develop these miraculous powers. And so at a place, so Bethel Church in Redding, California, for example, they have a Bethel School Supernatural Ministry, and many supernatural schools of ministry are patterned after the one at Bethel now that are popping up, and they claim that they are activating people in miraculous gifts, gifts like prophesying, healing the sick, um, these kind of things. But the way they would say that they're activating people in this miraculous, these miraculous gifts is often through having people engage in activation exercises. So for example, one that I witnessed when I went out to Bethel and witnessed uh, the adult Sunday school class there, the fire starters class, they would ask people to come to the front of the room who had never prophesied before and just randomly pick somebody in the room to give a prophetic word to and just say whatever words popped into their head as a prophetic word. No filters, just say what pops into your head as a prophetic word for someone in the room. Or, or sometimes what they'll do in this movement is they'll blindfold people and they'll have them stand back to back so they don't know who's behind them. And, and they'll ask God to tell them what the person's birthday is or their favorite color or things like that as a prophetic words. So these are ways they seek to activate people, for example, in the gift of prophecy. Um, but, but one thing I want to stress is, and one thing we really stress in our, in our books and interviews, is the teachings of this movement are not historic Pentecostal or classical charismatic teachings, a radical departure from that. Um, that we, we're not critiquing the beliefs of Pentecostals or charismatics that the spiritual gifts of prophecy or speaking in tongues or healing are for today. What we are critiquing is the belief that there's these governing offices of apostle and prophet that all Christians, including all church leaders, must submit to, and that they're bringing critical new revelation that the church must have, or else it won't be able to finish the Great Commission. And, and they would say the reason the church hasn't been able to complete the Great Commission to date, hasn't been able to set up God's physical kingdom on earth, this dominionist version of the Great Commission is because they, apostles and prophets have been missing for, for the past couple thousand years. Mm -hmm.